Hi, great. That's really cool that you'd um, get together with us here on uh, Transforming Theology for a couple minutes. And, you know, I know that you made the commitment to show up in Claremont on March 10th to 12th and meet with a bunch of brilliant, young, progressive theologians from all over the United States who want to understand a way to do theology differently than we used to do it with articles and a dissertation that no one reads. Yeah, I'm excited about that. (laughs) And and language that no one can understand. So what I wanted to do is ask you a couple of pre-questions and um, then post this up on the site and people will know from you what's going to be going on in March. How's that sound? Sure, sounds great. Okay, well, you know, we have this radical concept of doing theology after Google and beginning to experiment with some of the new technologies and the way that they allow community to be developed. But, in fact, you've been doing this for years. And so I wonder if you could pick out of all of your experience just a couple of examples of things that you've done where you felt like a form of doing church theology, practical theology, you know, theology that makes a difference in the world is happening, whether you want to choose ones where it's working or not working or perplexing, okay. that's up to you. But give us a couple examples in, for a couple of minutes. Well, tell you what, during uh, the sessions there, I'll, I'll share a lot of things that didn't work. But uh, in this, let me give you a couple that I think might be hints of, towards where we're headed. Uh, I think the first, we've talked about this, is uh, I, I think the role of the theologian and the role of the pastor may be morphing into uh, having uh, more of the... Uh, host element to it rather than the top down the dictatorial that kind of thing uh and so i i in my own life i've seen doing things like the ooze.com which allowed a wide variety of people to begin to engage in a safe place some of these new theologies and new ideas and that Mm -hmm. was fascinating or solarize to be able to invite a wide variety of people who actually even disagree with each other Mm -hmm. but could find places where they could unite and in round tables and discussions and so on and so forth um and out of that in the hosting of it i have found that uh Theology becomes more of kind of a her, uh, you know a community hermeneutic, mm-hmm. where depending on where you are, the place, the flavor, the taste, the sounds, the people, uh, emerges out of that um, a generally accepted understanding of some ideas versus um, you know someone being able to say, hey, I have the theology here it is, let me just hand it to you. Yeah, so hosting, yeah. I think, would be a, a one of those significant parts uh, for people to play with. Now, you're the only person I know of in the world that has an online television station that's broadcasting progressive theologians, emergent theologians, church leaders who are trying this stuff. And then you're, you're building a community around this TV station where I can post responses and blog. Can you talk a little bit about what it's been like to do that? What's worked? What intrigues you? What sure. vision it gives you for the church and for theology of the future. Well, and in that case, that's another great example of hosting. Uh, I, there are a wide variety of people who I really want to listen to, hear, see, um, and uh, and then share that with whoever's interested in and hearing. <clears throat> um, I, I think that a deep need and desire to always be learning. I kind of have a saying that if I'm not a little embarrassed about what I said yesterday, I probably didn't learn anything today. <laughs> uh, and so I think that's a big part of learning, you know, the ability to be vulnerable and humble and open. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you just w- waffle wherever it is. You come in kind of with these evolving absolutes. You know, I walk in really believing what I believe, but that doesn't mean that I won't listen and learn. And when I'm challenged, when I have some aha moments, I, I migrate those. I work. I navigate. Um, and so the thing that I found with the ooze.tv that's pretty fascinating is that I do come from a much more of a progressive point of view and whatever. And as I'm interviewing people, uh, I am finding, especially those who I would think would be more conservative than my, me and my views and ideas, uh, I'm constantly challenging those from the progressive standpoint to say, hey, wait a minute. You know, it, the pendulum doesn't need to just swing and to say that you were conservative at one point. You thought you had all the ideas down. Now you've got to be open and flexible, but you're just as rigid as you were as a conservative, <laughs> you know. And yeah. so, uh, listening to a, a lot of my guests on the news.tv, I'm finding myself constantly challenging uh, the progressives to also say, wait a minute, we need to talk and engage. Uh, yeah. I think of one like Andy Marin when we discuss the issue of homosexuality yeah. uh, or you know, gay and lesbian uh, community. And there's this sense of like, wow, you know, to have an honest and open conversation, we have to be careful to really honestly be listening. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, it, it's remaking theological categories on both sides, isn't it? 
It's not as if a particular place in the old spectrum, liberal and conservative, has suddenly won through the new forms of um, community and technology. It's rather everything's being made from the ground up. All the distinctions being rewritten. That's my impression. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, so, you can't think in in those old terms. It's there. We're finding third places, third ways. You know, we're transcending those others. Even in political ways, you look and you see in theological ways, you see some people who are extremely progressive in one sense and really conservative in another. And you're like, wait a minute, I had you pigeonholed just a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's the listening, the learning from each other, not the prejudging either way. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that strikes me so much more like the Jesus that I want to follow. Um, so, Spencer, you're going to show up, and can you give us just a teaser? What are a couple of the principles that, that when you get this room full of young theologians and then 200 people in this big auditorium, and you're talking about some of the stuff, what are a couple of the principles that, that you think you're going to be teaching the people there? Okay, I'll, I'll give you two. One is kind of a bummer, and it'll piss people off, and that's okay, so come out and play with it. You know, the other is a sense of real hope and joy and excitement. Uh, the first thing is, I think theologians today are training for jobs that do not even exist anymore. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, and even if you thought that when you started out on this thing that there was some outcome that you would have, I just think that even by the time you finish you know, whatever quest of learning you have in the short period of time, if it's a degree, degree program or whatever, uh, the world will have changed again, mm -hmm. you know. So in that sense, I would hope that people would begin to kind of um, – break out of, even if you think you're training for something, what about the options? What about the possibilities? Again, not to stiffen it down and rigid it in such a way. But in that same way, though, I think there's an amazing, beautiful possibility and opportunities for what might come with this in the future. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole new clean slate of being able to rewrite what a theologian is, you know, mm -hmm. and rewrite uh, what, um, what a pastor is. Well, I mean, depending on wherever you're trying to go with this, even mm. what seminary is, even what training is, even what yeah. discipleship is, all that. So you could see it as a negative thing like, oh, my goodness, or you could see it as a great opportunity to move mm -hmm. forward. So yeah. that would be one of it. Okay. And uh, the other would be <clears> – <throat> And this is where I think it's really exciting, and this is where I'll push the envelope as much as I can. And that is, I kind of believe that we're in a world kind of iPods and 57-inch plasma TVs. You know? Really? So, yeah, it's in this sense that uh, I think everybody has kind of an individualistic, uh, you know, uh, on-demand, 99-cent type mentality that's an iPod kind of game. I take mm. it, I work it, it's my own, I've got it, um, and it's a very independent place. But mm. Uh, and, and it's cheap and affordable and easy access and mobile, all those kinds of things. But then there's a whole nother trend, and that is the 57-inch plasma TV with a 7.1 surround sound, home theater, <laughs> chairs, the whole, which is more yeah. of a community event. And yeah. uh, a lot of people are spending a lot of their own resources to make these places and spaces happen. And so um, people are gathering together, and it's it's higher quality than you'd ever get in a you know regular game. Mm. I'm afraid that in the past the church and even our theology has been a simple 27-inch tube TV. <laughs> mm, right. and it's not adequate anymore. So how can we push theology to a 99-cent download, accessible to everybody, no prerequisites, you know, user-generated content, I mean, all in that whole game. Yeah. But then also, uh, I think we up the ante, too, and we go, you know what? It seems silly that somebody would spend – Thirty or forty thousand dollars on a home entertainment system, mm -hmm. but some do because there's a community and aspect to that mm -hmm. that people step up. And so I think theology would become easier on an entry level at a ninety-nine cent. But I think the theology that will begin to develop at the highest levels of lifelong learning are going to move into these other regions that will actually make you know seminaries and other training look like kind of twenty-seven inch tube TV. <laughs> I mean, what if people said for the next five years I'm going to spend a hundred thousand dollars on my education, but I'm going to get on a cruise and go across the world and learn, and I'm going to sit down with the top brains in this area and mm. engage in it. So I think it's there's some amazing possibilities that'll be, and there's it's. Again, it's not to swing the pendulum, but I'll yeah. stretch the imagination to the to the iPod and the 57-inch tube TV. Awesome. I love that vision, Spencer. That just it makes me want to jump up and start running.